Uh, next up, we have uh, Anglo American. Um, it's a global mining company. Uh, its portfolio includes iron ore, manganese, uh, metallurgical coal, base metals including copper, nickel, and, and precious metals, and minerals including platinum and diamonds. It has a market cap of 248 billion rand, a PE ratio of 13.8, and a dividend yield of 6.2%. That's obviously historical uh, based on you know current prices. I mean that market cap of 280 billion rand. It's come down heavily. I mean when what was all time highs of the share price about 550 oh, yeah, rand somewhere up there yeah a little not not so long ago <laughs> but, yeah so are you are, are you in the value camp with you know Pete mm. Fillion and the RCM boys who think that this <laughs> is a buying opportunity of a lifetime no I, I don't think so I mean I, if you look at Anglo you know it's, it's too much a function of, of what's happening to the commodity prices and the, that whole story of uh, you know how you know as the Chinese commodity demand increased and the, the commodity prices started to pick up I mean the amount of investment that all these these diversified miners did in capacity I mean, you saw Anglo piling into Minas Rio, you know, massive iron ore project there. Um, and, and I mean, you know, really expanding capacity. Now suddenly, you know, you're saw, starting to see the, the Chinese economy cooling off and you've almost got a double whammy. You know, you, you're getting you know, a slightly softer demand, but you're getting a massive increase in supply. So, I mean, if, we, if we're looking specifically at, I suppose, their more luxury goods side, so the, the, the mm. beers side, the diamonds, the diamonds we're a huge fan of. I mean, they're doing probably the, the, the crown jewels, <laughs> so <laughs> to speak, of the, of the, the Anglo stable. But, but I mean, unless platinum's recovering, I mean, we still see a lot of, a lot of headwinds there. I mean, the whole iron ore uh, story is also, you know, it's a very, very difficult position for the, for the company at the moment. So, so we, are, we are steering clear. We don't, we don't hold Anglo-American as a basket. If I, could, if I could strip out De Beers specifically and just take their, their diamond operations, I think I would do that. I mean, they're there. I mean, there's another great rand hedge. I mean, they sell, sell these diamonds in dollars. Most of their costs are in weakening currencies, especially with the dollar run that we've had. Um, yeah, and, and just very, very solid operational company. I mean, you know, increasing uh, you know, production levels, I think 5% as well. Um, and you know, they, they've now also sort of diversified out of South Africa. I mean, they've got two, two mines up in Canada as well. So I think the De Beers portion of it, very, very exciting, but the rest sort of dragging it down a little bit for me. Mm, I agree with you. I think when you ha had a look at that share price, you can see the market's not happy with those strategic decisions, you know, mm -hmm big write downs in Brazil. Um, but you know, sticking to our theme, De Beers is definitely a quality asset. I think they own about 85%. The Botswana go government owns another 15%. So that was also a very well-timed acquisition from the Oppenheimer family. Mm -hmm. um, but overall, you know, you're not just buying De Beers. You're getting the rest. You're getting the issues of supply and demand. You know, where's the next infrastructure boom going to come from? Is it India? Mm -hmm. um, we don't know yet. I think I agree with you. I think it's a bit volatile um, and I'm certainly not hot on on the overall business. Are you hot? No, not definitely not hot on Anglo. Not hot on Anglo.